Then moving on over here, this is my primary drone, and you can tell I've got the gold nuts back here because these are, I only fly the um, peanut butter and jellies now. These are the best props of all time. Love them. And I've crashed so many times with them on. I've probably only changed props a couple a couple times. I've still got tons and tons of props because I ordered a whole bunch right off the bat. Uh, but since this one's primarily, you can see the color is all blue. The LEDs are blue. Um, too bad I can't get a blue version of these props. <laughs> so I just wanted to do one color and the purple really doesn't go with it. So I took the, uh, the alternate colors from this one and I put them on this one. But it used to be that these ones had the, the gold or brown peanut butter color ones on the back. That's why it's got a different colored nut. And then the purple ones on the front. It was a really cool concept. But, you know, it is what it is. They still fly perfectly. I'm not a huge fan of the, the multicolored props anyways. I just like one color prop on it. But this one has my GoPro in it. Um, again, same camera. Don't have to talk about that much, but you can see just how much tighter the inside of that is. Didn't have to use the bracket. This is the Johnny FPV frame. Smaller frame, thinner frame. Uh, not a Truex, as you can see from the top. Uh, almost looks like a Truex, but it's not a Truex. Let's, let's show you the difference in case you were wondering. You can see the difference in the Truex on this side. Props here, you can see the width. And then your props here, you can see the width. It's the same. On this one, your props are close here, but they have the width of a frame between them. So it's not a Truex, true X, it's a Stretch Dex. Uh, this one's running the 2750 KV motors, which are amazing because these 2750 iFlight Zing 2750 KV motors make a 4S feel like a 5S. No joke, make a 5S feel like a 6S because they have so much power they draw a lot of amps, but they have so much power. They're stopping. Uh, it's just amazing. Their boost is amazing. I mean, these are some awesome, awesome motors. I haven't flown them on 6S. This is a 6S build as well. I haven't flown either of these on 6S, 6S yet, but I imagine these are going to be, like, just fantastic. Not only that, but because of the high KV, if you don't freestyle, like, punch the gas constantly... Uh, on 6S, I have a buddy that's flying these same motors on his, after I got mine, he got some too, and he's flying the exact same motors, and he was able to get 10, 10 minute flight times just doing regular freestyle, not distance flying, but on distance flying, more than likely he'll probably get 15, because this, this, I don't know what it is about these high KV, I even, on a 4S, I got 7, 8 minutes of flight time one time, and I wasn't bashing it, I wasn't like, slamming the throttle or anything but i was freestyling i was doing some pretty good freestyle i was you know blipping the throttle a lot and i still got seven about seven or eight minutes of flight time on it it was pretty cool that's when these motors were on this frame another thing i always get my leds from get fpv um because you can't get good ones on amazon sorry amazon but you just can't i've looked all over for good leds on amazon the only good leds i got from amazon is this uh beeper thing here but goes up to these. These are Lumineer. Same concept as the other LEDs. Uh, they go through. It's like a wire guard. And down here you pick your color that you want. And you bridge the solder together. And it's a permanent color. Um, and then I got some heat shrink over the top of these. Because this heat shrink makes these brighter. These aren't as bright as the tinies over here. But they're really good. I like them. I've got, in fact, I've got another set of these on another drone because I like them so much. And I've got an extra spare set. So I've got three sets of these because I like them so much. In this one, go straight to the stack. I'll show you this stack up over in the top corner. I think it's made more for a tiny whoop. But you have to put a 20 by 20 in here. I mean, you don't have to. You can fit a bigger one in here, but, it's, but because of this Johnny FPV frame, a 30 by 30 sticks way out here. And when you look down on it, you can see the sides of your board and everything sticking out the side. It leaves a lot to be unprotected. So you want to put a 20 by 20 board in this. Uh, it connects to the bolts on the bottom, which kind of sucks. You can either use the inside bolts for the 20 by 20 or the outside bolts for the 30 by 30. Um, which is cool. 
but you, I mean, you almost have to go with the 30 by 30. Everything in here is basically the same. It's a 6x, but it's a 20 by 20 version of it. A lot of this stuff is plug and play. Not a lot of soldering spots, which I don't like, because I'd rather solder directly to the board than plug in with plugs, because the plugs go bad. But other than that, I ended up, the one bad thing about this too, is I had to use the full size for a 30 by 30. I think they're M4 screws, which barely fit through this, so I had to figure out something else in soft mounting it. So it's not soft mounted the best. It comes with a whole new set of screws and stuff, but that would have left my arms weaker. And so this is like the first version of, of Johnny FPV. He's got another version of this where you put a 20 by 20 inside of it and it's got spots for it with the bolts that come with the 20 by 20. But this is like the first version. I got it for a whole lot cheaper because of that. Um, and I think it might even be a clone of the Johnny FPV. It might be. I could be wrong. Same VTX, the AKK VTX with the smart audio, but the 20 by 20 version of it which is amazing. That's all I go. When it comes to VTX, I get the AKK VTX. I just like them. Very great stack. Flies phenomenally. This is my number one. So this thing does any any command I give it, it does it. It feels like the drone's actually reading my mind. So whatever I want to do, it does it. It's just an amazing, amazing drone. And I struggled with this frame for a long time because I put other things in it. And I just, for some odd reason, every time I built this frame... It, I just couldn't get stuff to work when it comes to, and you can see how bad that, that would stick out the sides. This was on it, um, and then it death spiraled all the time. When I put this on it first, it did the same thing. Because I'm having to use the bigger standoffs, uh, everything squeezed closer together. And you can see right there is the button for uh, your bootloader button. And you can see the edge of that is right on the standoff. And the very first one that I had, the very first board that I had, the standoff actually broke off the bootloader and the board just stopped working. So that sucked. <laughs> and that's just part of the thing. You just kind of, I just kind of had to jimmy all this together. This is probably something that you wouldn't want to build. You know what I mean? Um, it's got a 35 volt capacitor in it right there. I don't think it has any other capacitors to it like, the, like my other board. My other board has a 35 volt and a 50 volt. This just has a 35 volt capacitor um, hooked directly up, soldered to the, the battery leads there, um, coming out to regular pigtail. I probably should put another 35 volt in it just, just because, but this thing flies amazingly. <laughs> and same thing, I got the extra long antennas on it. This one's running with a Team Black Sheep Clover. Um, on it that it, this used to be in my goggles but I'm not a huge fan of this I'm gonna get a lollipop and replace this one because I've really been enjoying the lollipops on this um, this is about this is the only one that I bought of the team black sheep receivers or uh, antennas and it's it's really not that great of an antenna I don't think I mean I was flying this and on this one I have with the rapid fire, I have oh, in an open field with trees and stuff. I have perfect vision the entire time. Can fly it around. It's a perfect drone. When it comes to um, flying and analog FPV, um, this one it's great for a long time. But after a certain point, about a hundred yards, this thing goes out, and you can't see where the crap. Even if you're down low under the trees or up high over the trees and stuff like it it just it doesn't perform that well at least i don't think so so even with setting the power on the vtx high it's just not that great i don't know why i use an emax snap strap on this anymore i love these straps you can see that it's uh it's got the anti-stick stuff in it both of my drones have some of this uma grip this one has a big strip of uma grip on it this uma grip you need it in your life. You do. This stuff is badass. Best stuff I ever put on my drone is this Uma Grip. I only had a little tiny bit left when I did this one because I have a big strip on my other drone too. My third drone uh, that had the mom in it had the had a bigger strap onto it. So this is all I have. This is all you need. This this is amazing. I love Uma Grip. Get Uma Grip. <laughs> so.
uh, Fly Sky Receiver again, and that's basically it on both of my drones. I, I run the GoPro session on both. I've got some old mounts, so that's why this mount doesn't look that good. Uh, they're just old. They've split and broke, and I've had to remelt them and stuff like that. They're not that great. Um, but what do you need? You're going to bash it up anyways. Your cameras are going to take some brunt force and stuff, so I don't ever fix it up and make anything new. It's just as long as it carries my GoPro, it's great. And I have the Hero, the Session Hero. The reason why I use this session, and it's an old session, the reason I use this is because I've bashed the living holy hell out of this thing since way back when I first started FPV. I used it doing reviews and stuff through the time that I stopped doing FPV, and then I've used it ever since I got back into FPV. And the reason why I use this is because I switched over to a GoPro Hero 7, and it broke in the first devastating crash and then I used another GoPro and it broke in the first devastating crash this is I've had I have bashed the living hell out of this I've had some devastating crashes that broke multiple arms uh, popped off multiple um, props broke frames standoffs bent standoffs I've got I had one crash that I showed on my uh, 3d printing and FPV life where I just bent the hell out of the, the standoff and all sorts of stuff. And I've never I've never busted that GoPro. That GoPro has just lasted forever. It is the best GoPro to use for FPV. The best. I've never bashed a camera more than I've bashed this camera. And it's just lasted. Kept on ticking. Works just as perfect as it did day one. I can't use it underwater anymore. Because there's some spots in it where you can see it doesn't seal anymore. Because it's been bashed so many times. Dents in the back. You can see where it got slammed against one of the one of the bolts. Um, just nasty, nasty how bent this back piece is here. But I've never changed that that glass out there, not one time. But that's basically everything in my two primary drones that I fly religiously when I fly. Uh, these are the ones that I fly every time I go out and fly. Um, I'm fixing up the other one. I'm going to put another Mamba board on it because I love how Mambas fly. These are great. This one flies perfectly. It feels like it does what I want, when I want. The stick commands, it almost reads my mind and does what I meant to do, not what I did. I love this thing. And the 2750 KV motors are just fantastic. You got to get you some. Awesome motors. Budget basher. <laughs> you know what I mean? This one's a budget basher. You can bash the crap out of this and replace everything for super cheap. I mean, they're both kind of like that, to be honest with you. This frame's a little bit more expensive. These standoffs are secondary. I put these on myself that I bought separately that are a little bit more expensive. Uh, they're stronger, made out of a stronger metal. Um, I have done a little chipping away at the arms and stuff here. I have crashed this multiple times and haven't done much to it. Um... It's been a great frame, tiny frame. But when it comes to weight, to be honest with you, this one feels lighter. This one feels heavier. This one doesn't have a GoPro on it, but still, same point. You can kind of tell the, the weight of the GoPro. But anyways, my name is Bryce Michael RC. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure that, um, try any of these out. These boards are fantastic. Success, success, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Success, are they just called success? Because they have X's. Success or Success. I don't know. But they're great. They fly phenomenally. I mean, especially if you're just getting into drones and you want to fly something cheap because you're worried or something like that. These are about as cheap as you can get. Besides the Mamba. The Mamba, you can get an F4 drone for fairly freaking cheap from Get FPV. Uh, and on Amazon. There's spots on Amazon. I'll show you an Amazon ad here. I'll put all the links in here. Make sure that you click on them. Uh, make sure that you go down below and there's a link to Audible. And click on that link to Audible and go, go set yourself up with a subscription. When I'm building these drones, it's it's awesome to sit back and just listen to an audiobook. And not only audiobooks, but podcasts. Um, there's teachings and all sorts of things on there that you can get into and just kind of listen to. Sometimes I like to watch uh, binge watch things on Netflix or binge watch things on Hulu or something like that, like the, the, the Musketeers has become my favorite. Um, 
show to watch while building and doing things. But sometimes you just kick back and you can just listen to an audiobook or something, get lost in it and imagine it yourself and stuff. And it's just, it's almost better than watching something like The Musketeers, which is highly graphic and an amazing show. Um, click on the link and subscribe. Uh, you go out, I think, I think I'm going to go out flying and stuff and literally listen to audiobooks while I'm flying. It's just something I do at work, everything else. Get your subscription, listen to some audiobooks, listen to some podcasts and stuff, some teaching, some spoken word, you know, all sorts of stuff. There's just an array of, an, there's just a huge catalog that you can get into on, on it. So, check that out, check the link in the description. And... My name is Bryce Michael R.C. Oh, and click on the other links in the description if you want to buy any of this stuff. I'll go ahead and I'll put also put the GetFPV links in these uh, so you guys can get to them. And then I was going to show you guys these on and flying and in action, but I'll show you guys another time. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep coming back uh, so you guys can see these LEDs and stuff and see how these things fly. We've got about two feet of snow on the ground right now, so I don't really want to take these out. You can see how shiny the bottom part of this is, and that's because I did conform or coat it. I conform or coated both of these, made them waterproof, but I've since worked on them, so they are no longer fully waterproof anymore. Uh, they're more like splash-proof, but not waterproof. <laughs> so, anyways, this has been a long, long video, but it's I think it's worth it. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.